Welcome to day 232, lesson 203, pages 597 and 98 from the Sovereign Light, this novel named after my ministry, a course in metaphysical spirituality and how popular to foresee the meaning of metta and after the fact that ascension will bring to us as we explore on it some more and venture into the expansion of this thing called ascension. So with this intention in mind, Welcome. My name is Reverend Maria Arvanatides, and won't you join me here today on further this topic to explore? And if it hasn't answered any of your questions already, that you might have taken note throughout your days and to come. What is ascension? Have you independently explored it on your own, within your own circumstances, within your own environment, when engaging with others, and how you perceive them? Are you perceiving them in their best version of themselves? Or are you filtering through your own perspectives and blockages of belief systems and other opinions that bring about judgment and through those filters that you might see the blemishes in them or maybe even see another that you have experienced with in previous engagements that they become an extension of this reflection for you to work through your karma, if you will. <laughs> this is it. This is what we're working through. In actual fact, we're releasing all these judgments. And so, when we become enlightened, we let go of all those heavy burdens. We relinquish them through forgiveness and transmuting the energetic field so that we can become lighter, more light-hearted, not as serious in that way of heavy-hearted weight that as, for example, a backpack that we carry on our back full of big boulders or whatever it is that becomes our burdens, these crosses that we bear in density. When we enlighten them, we become resurrected. And we go through this process within the box, within the matrix of ascension and dissension and ascension and dissension till it's time for us to evolve and transcend and move into another fishbowl. And as we do this, and we can to resurrect and resurrect again within this body, and we can transfigure and we can form another paradigm, another quantum leap forward or back or whatever it is the variations we are wishing to experience when we put all the pieces together to create our environment so that when there's is there ever anything left that we don't feel we need to learn much more then we do we transfigure and we transcend into another playing field and with that said let's begin to start centering ourselves and focusing on the here and now and with every breath in, 
start to notice this beautiful environment and just breathe it in as I breathe it out and through your screen into your morphogenic field that keeps on constantly in motion reanimating you with every breath in and out and as you ground yourself through the soles of your feet and bring that chi that primal life force all the way up feel it surging to your heart space center and your higher consciousness your consciousness feel that coming from your crown your corona <laughs> your pineal gland and the back and the front and everything just feel yourself sinking right in to your heart space center and feel it with every breath and you can now to use body movement to help you breathe and it just expanded outward. And with that center and anchor, and feel with every breath in this relief, this sigh of relief as you breathe out. And you can, wherever you, you can do belly breathing even, but that's a little different. So when you're breathing in, your belly goes out and when you're breathing out your belly goes in so there's certain practices we can do but for now let's bring it to our natural state and just very simple focus on your breath and bring everything to your heart space center this congregation that you might Feel this breathing from your heart and just expand that outward as far out into the community as you can but stay and remain centered in the here and present moment not in the future or what's pulling you out from what you were dealing with before or what you have to do but just right here in this present moment where everything meets in the heart space center this is the gateway to the fifth dimensional and density multi-dimensional awareness reality that we sense through the heart space center that then surges up through our nerves, our many nerves, all the way up into a higher mind that opens our crown and lahoon and becomes more into the 10th chakra, 11th and galactic centers. And we've mentioned this spark of light, this sovereign light that is your northern star that starts from there in the here and now space and just breathe that in for a moment find your place welcome home and we begin the sermon Let us begin now, and you can opt to have your eyes closed or open. And as we go into this, we become aware of the activation for the day. And so, within the ugly, there is beauty, screaming to be let out. Release all the identifiable connections and bind 
that has bounded you to a sense of duty and loyalty to this duty. The, the need to belong to a tribe, the need to be self-identified within community. Just let all that go and just be. Be in the here and now in the nothingness within source where all potential, infinitely divine, can be created. And so the impurities, just let them wash away because they can't capture to exploit the reverence of yourself that holds it, its grace. The relationships within the self can be as innocent when forming a relationship with others. And as much as the interpretation of it can allow, can the choice be made available to focus on the pollution of its planet or at the untouched parts that missed the ruling influence of punishment and consequence that would have otherwise made it ugly altogether? So these interferences, these are interferences that interface into our awareness and become realities that we become feeling within our energetic bodies a sense of debt, a karmic debt, if you will, in some cases. And in others, in the hopes of obtaining a beneficiary, a benefit, future outcome for a compensating karmic effect. A hyper beneficial karmic effect from knowing you have done well and operating from a sense of beauty to see as simple as to be and see another in their best versions of them and not expect anything in return. There is no duty. There is nothing there to fix. And these imperfections that we might see within another and within ourselves, that is what pulls us down. And so we continue playing and With that said, let's begin. Let's begin to bring these words together. And as we say them out loud, to really feel what it is, this vortex we're creating to pull us in and help us through and guide us with the confidence and with the support of the backing of our feeling and how we feel when we say these words out loud and what they actually mean to us and what it is that by this pure impression we create. To collapse and form into our reality that we might engage with and learn from. So, whenever you're ready, let's begin. Where I choose to focus 
my attention on will be and only in the way I wish to interpret seeing it as where I choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way I wish to interpret seeing it as where I choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way I wish to interpret seeing it as By denying the ego and projecting it out toward a false interpretation that God is not might for some, get rid of it altogether. So what we're projecting as from a our imagination, a recreated image of what we can relate as best versions of ourselves, we then come to agree upon, whether it be through compromise or just through pure satisfaction and idolism and worship that we may become motivated and enslaved by it. This image that it might be in pure arrogance to say of one certain gender or one certain race or one certain color or creed or culture. And from there, thus, the divisions are created. And within this falseness of evidence appearing real, the fear of God that rules over and the sacrifices we make to keep that entity in place while it feeds off our energy and becomes a spiritual, stagnant, religious figurehead and so by denying the ego and projecting it out toward a false interpretation that God is not might for some get rid of all altogether so others so headstrong to contradict this statement and blindfully just think of themselves when others see them the way they speak, especially when I think of women, and they say, well, God and he is so mighty. I think they're, are they talking about their husbands or they think that they are men themselves? And so it's taken to that extreme of blindness. And <laughs> what you say and what you hear coming out of their mouths and the interpretation of a one-sided, it's like they're totally excluding themselves as spiritual beings to, to create a false energetic entity. And now it becomes a currency and the energy that we put forth and empower a false spiritual creation and in essence becoming something 
that we have this chain, this ball and chain of commitments and a sense of duty and become almost like concubines to a dead ghost of the past that we go and we become servants and slaves to this death cult. And so with that said, let's continue on because I'm just starting to sense the Plutonian energy here in November and it doesn't really do me well the plutonian energy has caused a lot of grief in my life <laughs> and so it's something that i've been learning from uh, the time i was born this plutonian <laughs> energy <laughs> and so with that said i don't want to get too subjective i want to remain objective so that i can channel through properly with as little filters as possible <laughs> And so, in this way, less distortions and more relations can be made to actually getting something out of this lesson. And so, <laughs> it is within this that others so headstrong to contradict the statement that I just made and plausible and just as good to help in the release of ego identity in such reactions. And it is working. And how would it be working for you? What are some of your stories? What are some of your experiences? And so when there are no more buttons to be pushed, the self can begin to pick up the many powerless pieces of itself to further integrate these parts of ego and just as well with all its many shadows. The way to cancel out from its equation is to transmute in such a way that it can be made possible to transfigure then finally to ascend and into a transformative shift to shape for self its external circumstances of its material world with its Maya matrix. We create our own matrices. And so when we come into agreement as a collective, then we create an actual reality and whether we do it with a new world order or how we do it we're giving our power to contribute to be a part of or we don't have to at all and do it in the other way rather than the inverted way just think it's the mirror and we can reverse it and do it in a natural way. And this is the teaching. And as we shed away through transformation, all these backwards inverted through the mirror kind of realities that we empower, let's take our power back and transmute alchemically yes this is a way of the alchemist and through this way we can transfigure and transcend and recreate in the way we want to see our reality how we prefer it in in the best version of ourselves and others in it and let's take this quantum leap. And we do it through the heart space center. And as we remain sti st still within the stillness, that peaceful feeling 
where everything around us is chaotic and motions through us. We can choose to impress whatever it is we look at will collapse and form itself in the way we see it. But first we must clear and transmute all those other energetic impressions upon us that have been borrowed or perhaps even enforced upon us. And it is called inner work. And so where I choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way I wish it to interpret seeing it as. So, where these sticky points exist along the way is where it must explain for itself and that it is enough to be considered worthy, a worthy player for the game, this game we know and come to accept as reality, deserving of its so many inquisitive excuses, and in all fairness of such games, it had never considered that it would be allowed such privileges and as to qualify the why it can't to choose to join in. Why all this confusion is the wake-up call that the self had at the forefront of creating. A real visionary and yet lacking the social know-how to coordinate and communicate with such cooperation for assistance. Just lets it happen effortlessly and without pushing over for anything that it can be the many of resistance from before now pushing even harder to demand of the unfairness some explanation to why they were not involved in the having. Why so much strife to keep it out had developed the limit of those choices in the first place? So some of us already are there and we create things and we get others to to come and join us and play and and create this world with and some of us are builders and dreamers and we do build structure for all of you it's just that some of us like who do these things and can provide the structure and the building blocks do not have that currency that energetic flow to bring the people in with interest that they may venture into called money. So we are told and we're fed with these lies from our lineage, from our families, from our tribe, that we need to have this money in order to, to get people to work for us, in order to make things happen. And yet, naturally, it goes in the other order, in the other way. Unnaturally, it is enforced and forced in this way that creates our limitations. When you look at it, all corporations incorporated, they're corps, they're corpses. You look at the names, limited. It can't get something that's unlimited unless you do it yourself and then it's not part of that game, that part of death cult reality that we choose to enslave ourselves and, and 
gain some monetary finances so that we can somehow see a glimpse of hope in being naturally ourselves. And so these are some things to consider that we might awaken and become sovereign and see emerge from it all and the self must learn to where it needs to come together and unite these separate parts it is through these separations that the gaps have made to hold the information needed for the self to grasp and then they will close so all these people that we have around us that are absolutely like ghosts like background people like they're dead like they're motionless like they're irresponsive like they're not even there and soon as we get to know them they come to life and we learn those aspects of ourselves that we didn't know before and it was like wow <laughs> I just you know it's like each person is like a treasure chest well when it comes to my Facebook friends anyway that I've been noticing and shame on me for not getting to know them and they probably feel the same isolation from everybody else and it's like once you see them and open that treasure chest of theirs and really get to know them then you're like wow look at all that worth and it has nothing to do with how much money they have or or you know so or what others have seen and what versions that they've placed um, titles and uh, their image to be as falsified within that rigid limit of uh, self-identifying who they are and their self-worth when you when you go through that mask and you and you open and you remove that mask like it was that treasure chest opening and seeing and feeling them from a heart space center and actually seeing the spirit rather than the energy they offer but engaging with that spirit of another not the false sense or essence of that spirit that they come to know as currency and value and worthiness of that false evidence appearing as real because of what others have projected onto them uh, these uh, prejudices and prejudgments and uh, oh this is how useful you can be in this way and how useful and make people into objects and tools and exploit them and and, and you know uh, <sighs> this is this kind of degradation that we've all are experiencing is this ball and chain that we have in a dualistic way agreed collectively to bind ourselves to this fleshy image called God and now we are learning or we are not and we are being divided or come together from all the divisions into the actual polarities of darkness and light and so the self must learn to where it needs to come together and unite these separate parts these parts of ourselves that we see in others and the world around us reflecting us back like mirrors and once we work through these mirrors like membranes they dissolve and we no longer see the world in a backwards inverted way and we learn to be creator God beings in the likeness of 
and what it truly means that Christ was teaching and all the other ascended masters for God's sakes. Okay? Don't feel guilty or ashamed or that you're not worthy to know this information. Take it in as deep as you can and let it change you. Feel the light. Feel the warmth. Feel the coming home. The celebration of your telomeres light up. <laughs> From every cellular level, on a microscopic level, the celebration of you coming home to yourself. And watch the chromatins from the cells that extend outward, those feelers called the telomeres, light up and become illuminated already. So this is the union, the oneness. But when they start to separate and, and have their own divisions, is what creates these illnesses like cancer. One of the many dissatisfactions that our systems, it's like a little rebel, but when they all unite and we feel that surging, that primal goddess surge all the way up and open and the back, the oils from the back of her neck to where the skull meets, these are the things that we start to activate each level of ascension in this process. And so, for each level in ascension of this process, it can then, with these gaps that we learn and bring and cancel out the differences, like scales, if you will. This is why it's always tip one side or the other, because if they go like this, they cancel out each other, you see? And when they can cancel out each other, you know that they're illusions to begin with. And so once all these gaps are closed and the self can live completely from this law of oneness, it can be unstoppable, incorruptible in its complete wholeness. It can then timeline shift into any dimension in timelessness that it feels like without a catch nor glitch. It is in the timeline jumping and shape-shifting that moves it out of its comfort zone and that is also needed for it will never stop evolving. It's our resistance to the evolving that creates this stuck feeling and creates whatever it is that crisis and that we work through and become resilient or whatever disease we end up getting or mental illness or other physical illness or depending on whatever seven layers of our bodies it hits or the four actually uh, depending on your teachings and all these divisions that have come about to teach us will eventually dissolve and the membranes too will disappear and we become one in the wholeness in the likeness in the image of our best versions of ourselves <laughs> There is no uh, sexual uh, connotation or image to idolize and, and, you know, and enslave ourselves in that kind of desire. Desire can be a very pure, 
wholesome and interpretation of what desire really does it drives our passion our joy comes and feeds on this desire and this is these are all higher perceptions of the same words that have been corrupted and so the purpose is to raise our frequency by all means and the purpose is to understand or grasp the present moment just breathe that in just a little bit differently than before each and every moment that animates and reanimates it's like a picture and another picture and another picture and creates every moment by moment creates momentum and the purpose is to grasp the present moment just a little bit differently than before in that it can impress upon all timelines simultaneously all at once because there is no past there is no future it's all in the here and now simultaneously and spontaneously as we live through every moment through a heart space center and thank you so very much for joining me here today such a beautiful place and my my skull and bones here <laughs> i thought it was like wow man i've had this scarf since the 80s my skull and bones and um so with that said i will leave you with this affirmation activation that we may say throughout the day and notice any changes that you want to make note of you can slowly start to come around <laughs> blink your eyes open or just say these words out loud with me let's begin and until next time i'll see you for day 204 where i choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way i wish to interpret seeing it as make sure to always see everything in its best version of itself everything and this is how we make the changes. And this here today, this affirmation is to help guide you and reassure that you will make the changes into believing your empowerment, that you have this power, this connection to your focus. Where I choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way I wish to interpret seeing it as. Not how other people are enforcing and telling me to see it as, but how I feel I want to see it as. So let's say it again. Where I choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way I wish to interpret seeing it as. Where I choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way I wish to interpret seeing it as.
where I choose to focus my attention on will be and only in the way I wish to interpret seeing it as. And so it is. <laughs>